this video will explain how to compute the vector products of unit vectors i, j, k. Remember what are the unit vector i, j, k? If you have a three-dimensional x, y, z coordinate system, then i is a unit vector parallel to the x-axis means, means i is this vector, the length is 1 j is a vector parallel to the y-axis of length 1 which is a unit vector j and k is a unit vector parallel to z-axis of length 1 Just now we already mentioned if a and b are non-zero vectors and a cross b is equal to zero, then a and b are in the same direction or opposite direction, so they are parallel. This is because if they are parallel or in the opposite direction, then the angle between them is either zero degree or 180 degree. So the length of the vector is the magnitude of a, magnitude of b, sine zero, which is zero, or magnitude of a times magnitude of b times sine 180, which is also zero. So we conclusion. So in conclusion, a cross a is equal to zero. That means from here, we can reduce that i cross i is zero, j cross j is zero, and k cross k is zero. Zero means this is zero vector. Next property is this. If the magnitude of A cross B is equal to the magnitude of A times magnitude of B, then A and B must be perpendicular to each other. This is because the magnitude of A cross B, if A and B are perpendicular to each other, magnitude of A cross B is magnitude of A times magnitude of B times sine 90, but we know sine 90 is 1. So, magnitude of A cross B is magnitude of A times magnitude of B. So in that case, so, so in that case we know that the magnitude of i cross j is equal to the magnitude of j cross k is equal to the magnitude of k cross i is equal to 1. This is because the magnitude of i is 1, magnitude of j is 1, magnitude of k is 1. Now, what is actually i cross j? Let's look at the following diagram. We have the i, vector i, along x-axis, and vector j, along y-axis, and the angle between them is 90 degree. Now, when you do the cross product, you use the right hand and turn. In this case, you have to turn from i to j. So, you have to turn in the anti-clockwise direction. So if you use right hand, you'll find that I have to turn this way, anti-clockwise direction, and my right hand thumb is pointing outward. Therefore, we conclude that I cross J is parallel to K. It's in the same direction of K. But then the length of I cross J is 1. So we must know that i cross j is equal to k, as the right hand thumb show. Once you know i cross j, then we can also know what is j cross i. So j cross i, we know is the negative of i cross j, which will give you minus k. That means it's point downwards. Let's look at another case. If I want to find what is the cross product of j cross k, so I have vector j here parallel to y-axis, vector k here parallel to z-axis. So if I want to find j cross k, I must turn from j to k. I must turn this way using the right hand. 
and if I turn the right hand this way, notice that the thumb will point towards this direction, which is in the direction of I. Therefore, I know J cross K is in the same direction of I. The magnitude of J cross K we found earlier is equal to 1. So, J cross K has length 1 in the direction of I, so it must be equal to I. Then how about K cross J? Then K cross J is a negative of J cross K. Since J cross K is I, so this is negative I. Lastly, I want to find the value of K cross I. So I have a vector show here K in the direction parallel to Z axis and I in a direction parallel to x-axis. So when I want to find k cross i, I must use the right hand, start from the first vector k, turn it to the second vector i. So I must turn this way. So when I turn this way, I find that the thumb, okay? so when I turn this way, the thumb have to point towards the y direction, which is in the direction of j. That means that the value of k cross i is j. This is because k cross i is in the same direction as j, and the magnitude of k cross i we find earlier is equal to 1. Similarly, then we can find what is i cross k. Now i cross k is negative of k cross i. And since k cross i is j, so this is negative j. 